like y'all like what's who do i think that i am like i'm not jackie i know hey y'all welcome back to my youtube channel i'm cecily also known as bad fat black girl i'm a writer i'm an entertainment journalist and i have been neglecting my instagram i'm so sorry don't be sorry ho be careful lord gee what was um, yeah, I have not taken any pictures um, because, you know, I was just a little busy writing a book. <laughs> I finished my manuscript this week, so I'm super excited to just be like jumping back into things. I'm going to film another video later on today that'll probably come out next week. Um, but in this here video, y'all are going to be getting ready with me. Um, and when I say getting ready with me, I mean it in a very loose sense of the word because um this is not a beauty channel <laughs> so um i really actually want to use this video to just like talk about some of the things that have been going on i particularly want to talk about the recent passing of chadwick boseman and really reflecting on the experience that i actually had with Chad chadwick when um i was still an entertainment journalist and you know some other you yeah, know just some other little stuff i want to talk about um, and I'm gonna be doing that while I do my makeup to take my pictures. So, let's get into it. Oh my God, this feels so weird. I feel like y'all are gonna drag me for like my makeup, but I'm like, no, it's okay. This is not beauty YouTube. The monsters are not here. It's okay. <laughs> um, I am gonna be using a, like a, a Fenty foundation. So I'm just gonna use a Fenty primer too. Um, before I start anything, what I actually wanna know is do y'all watch Lovecraft Country on HBO? Because it is the content that I am just literally obsessed with. Okay, also y'all, um, I got a wax earlier today and I got my chin waxed and I went and my skin is actually really super sensitive. So what I wish I would have done is why I think I thought maybe I would need to wash my face and moisturize it again because um i washed and moisturized my face this morning um and it's not that late but uh now i'm kind of regretting that just because i'm a little sore but it's okay we're gonna rock with it lovecraft country on hbo is so good so um for those of y'all who have not watched it um it's about these um i can't even begin to honestly explain to you what it's about i think more so what i want to talk about though is the genre of it it's black sci-fi jordan peele is one of the um directors journey smollett is in it who is as we all know the superior uh smollett i mean going all the way back to eats by you and that's just on period i don't want to hear nothing else about it from nobody um Journey Smollett is in it. And what I love about Lovecraft Country is that be, it's it's not only like a black sci-fi, but it's a period series. So it's like set in um, the 50s in Chicago. That doesn't have anything to do with why I like it, okay? I can like a show that's based in Chicago, not because it's based in Chicago. But it's set in Chicago on the South Side, bitch. <laughs> One of the characters and his wife essentially uh, published the the Green Book, the Negro's Traveler's Guide, the Negro um, the Negro Motorist Guide. But it was you know called the Green Book, and it was like this book that Black travelers could use um, during. Um, the segregation and Jim Crow and all that shit to figure out where they could stay, what gas stations would actually service them, where they could eat, what restaurants and stuff they could go to. But then he's also just like really interested in like sci-fi and um, his favorite book is Dracula. Um, and his whole family is like that. He has this nephew who is also interested in uh just like weird paranormal shit um the daughter draws comic books and i love that because it's just not very often that you see shows that especially set in times of really um overt racial um prejudice and segregation and shit like that 
that you see black people have interests outside of like their own oppression. Like it's not just a movie about like voting rights or marching on Washington or a, a, um, a legal case where somebody is being wrongly convicted because they're black. And there is a lot of that in there obviously because that's the time, but it's so refreshing to see this show that's just about like black folks who are into science like I don't know and then obviously like Jordan Peele is one of the directors so it's just like a lot of um it's kind of scary and spooky um it's obviously a lot of uh sci-fi um influences in the show so like it's not like a drama if you will but I love it I think it's so good Journey Smollett when I tell you that bitch is an actress, like Journey Smollett be acting, like I don't want to hear nothing about it. Like, and the fact that she has not been properly given her flowers is just really, it's upsetting me and my homegirl. Like Journey Smollett is that bitch. Like I love her so much. What y'all think about the show? Tell me in the comments. Um, So I'm doing my eyebrows, I'm starting with a, um, just a, a Revlon Color Stay Brow Creator. Um, just going in just with some strokes of a um, pencil, um, which I, I actually normally don't do, but because I'm taking pictures and I really want my eyebrows to like look cute, I'm gonna do it this way today. Um, I'm thinking about actually laminating my brows. Y'all, I really like that look. I've been seeing like a lot of the girls either get their brows laminated professionally or have someone else do them. And I think I might be into that, so. I'll keep y'all posted on if I decide to do it, but or maybe I won't because this is not a beauty channel. Y'all see how I'm y'all see how I've literally put on half of an eyebrow and I'm like, stay tuned for future lamination. Like y'all, like what's who do I think that I am? Like I'm not Jackie Ina. Yeah, I'm not good at these type of videos because how how do y'all be staying on track of what y'all talking about? I feel like I'm I'm feel like I am rambling, okay? But anyway, oh, um, one other thing that I wanted to address just because um, some folks have kind of brought it up to me in passing or whatever, like just kind of wanting to know my thoughts and I just like wasn't ready. Sorry, I had to wet my beauty blender. Um, just wasn't ready to talk about it. But like Megan is Stallion and Tory Lanez and Megan, you know, um, finally, oh, I'm not done with my eyebrows. What's wrong with me? Um, actually, I can do that part later. Megan Thee Stallion finally, like, naming Tory Lanez as the goofy-ass nigga that shot her, which, you know, is something that we kind of all knew. I mean, you know, like, all all signs was pointing to that goofy-ass nigga, you know, having been the person that um, wounded our good sis Meg. Um, but then she finally kind of came out and confirmed it. Um to you know the ire of the internet who you know said that she was doing it for cloud and you know whatever whatever i mean i'm not really gonna comment too much on how the public responded to it because we already know that people don't trust black women they don't like black women they don't like to believe black women and they don't like to fuck with shit that we say what i want to say is that in terms of the 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 <laughs> I don't even want to, it's not even lack of accountability, but just like, yeah, no, lack of accountability. Like the fact that no one is holding uh, Tory Lanez accountable and that Tory Lanez himself is not really being accountable for the fact that he shot Meg. Um, I'm gonna be honest, you know, I am a defund the police kind of girl. Um, so I'm not particularly interested in any, um, you know, I'm not calling for Tory Lanez to be arrested, to go to jail, or anything of that nature. I want that nigga touched. <laughs> and that's that's it, that's all, that's on period. I don't know, I don't, I'm nervous to even like get too into it because I don't know how YouTube uh, feels about stuff like that. But you know, he shot that girl in the legs, in her, in her feet, right? Like her feet were injured. Um, from what I'm hearing or, you know, seeing kind of online, he was like aiming at her feet, which seems like such a very strategic and vindictive way of exacting revenge on someone. Um, 
and one, I don't want Meg to be walking around here as the person who knows who shot her. That just, I don't want that for my sis. And I understand that might be the road that she has to take because of her career, you know, she, she has a career. She's not in the streets. I understand that, but that is, that is just going to be hurtful for my soul to if 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 Tory Lanez is just allowed to walk around it's just allowed to be in Houston you know to go you know like what if he go on tour again like y'all he gonna be able to go tour in Houston or even LA like you know what I mean like I just I hate that um for her and I wish that I could see some more resolutions along the um from within the community. I'll just say that I would love a community-based approach towards accountability for Tory Lanez. Oh, you motherfuckers. And I'll just leave it at that. Fuck the police. Um, I don't really have a dog in the fight of whether or not he goes to jail. I never want to hear another one of his songs. To be honest, couldn't tell you one of the bitch songs to begin with. But um, yeah, fuck him for what he did to our sis. And that's just that's just that on on period. Period. So wow, the fact that um I feel like I've been doing all this talking and ain't even finished my eyebrows yet. The rest of my face goes by pretty fast though. These these brows though, you just you have to take your time with it because baby, who 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 finna be walking around with a known as the uh the bad brow bitch? And not I. Uh-uh, not I. All right, let's just get some powder in there. And then we can start talking about, oh, the terrible, terrible, terrible news um, that we got. Um, so this, this is, I'm Fenty, I'm a Fenty Fade, I'm a Fenty Shade 400 in the um, summertime, and I think I'm more of a 385 in the winter, but, um, I, sometimes this just feels a little bit too orange for me. Um, and I have this Giorgio Armani, you know, I have this Giorgio Armani um, sheer, uh, it's called, a, a, it's literally called Fluid Sheer. Um, but it's basically kind of like um, a luminizer or whatever. And I actually like to mix these together. So I'll do like two, one, one pump luminizer for every pump foundation. Oh. Okay, but it drips, so I have to work kind of fast and in sections. So as I'm sure all of you all have heard by now um, about the recent passing of Chadwick Boseman, who was our superhero. At us, and by us, I mean us collectively as black people. Um, if you're new to this channel, that's almost always who I'm talking about and talking to on this channel. I talk to black people because I'm black and I like black people. If you're new here, just FYI. Um, Chadwick Boseman passed away uh, on Friday, last Friday, of uh, colon cancer that he had been fighting for about four years. He uh, basically, when he was filming a lot of the recent roles that he did, uh, like Marshall and um i think even black panther even while he was working with working on black panther at some point there was some overlap there between his diagnosis as well and it was really just like shocking it literally felt like you know i think and a lot of people have been making this comparison it felt like when kobe Bryant died all over again um just in terms of like the disbelief like it like what who died? You know, at first I was saying that 2020 was the drunk uncle that fucks up the function, like comes, it always comes drunk to the function, raises a fool at the function, but then the moment somebody says something to him, like, yo, uncle, like, chill, you know what I mean? Then it's, oh, I want to come in this raggedy motherfucker anyway, and he's storming out, and it's like he's, he's, He's ruined his day and then he's gone just as quickly as he came. Because I was like, damn, I looked up. It's already September. Like, you know, like I felt like the year was, the year is terrible, but it's going by fast. But now, 2020 
20 is just hot white trash. Like, it's just white trailer park trash. Like, I, it's just that. Like, it's just trash. Like, I don't understand how much else we are supposed to be able to endure as a, 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 a species, <laughs> um, let alone um, as black folks. We, so much has been taken from us this year. And then it's like, bitch, y'all really came and got the Black Panther. Like, that's who had to go. Like, right, like, at this moment in time, that's who had to go. Um, And it... Like, what do you say? What do you say? Like, there are no words. You know what I mean? It's like, what, what do you say? Like, what can you possibly say about a death like that? I mean, and obviously, like, he was only 43. So, you know, it, it was obviously, like, not expected by any means. But you just never expect for, I just did not expect to hear that. Chadwick Boseman, that fucking T'Challa, that the, the Black Panther Wakanda forever, bitch. Like, nah, I just did not expect it. But then to hear that he had been dealing with this fight with colon cancer and for how long he had been dealing with it, that just what took another, a deeper impact for me. Um, so if you follow me on Twitter, you will know that during uh, th last week, uh, as I was just trying to like um, wrap up my, my book manuscript, I had a gallbladder attack. I had to go to the emergency room. It was the worst pain that I had ever been in. And it was a pain that was so severe that it was like really scary. And I was like, oh my God, like what if it's something worse? Like what if I have colon cancer? Like, oh my God, oh my God. I was just like so frustrated, so, so scared. So I also think it just really hit me on like the level of like, oh, and then of course I'm in there and like, what I'm also thinking about is like, oh my God, this trip to the emergency room is going to be so expensive. Like this follow-up appointment that I got to have is going to be so expensive. This, this is going to be so expensive because the health, our healthcare situation in this country is fucking trash. We have to pay too much fucking money for our healthcare. So like all of that stuff was like just running through my brain as I'm like thinking about this young 43 year old guy that like passed away. But then... I remember my interview with Chadwick Boseman when they were doing press for Marshall. Wow, I'm, I feel emotional. I'm not gonna cry no shit like that, but I like wow. Um, I interviewed Chadwick Boseman when um, they were doing press for Marshall. I interviewed him and I interviewed Sterling K. Brown, and that press junket always stands out to me because Sterling K. Brown, is that was probably one of the most fun interviews that I've ever had and that I've ever done. Literally, um, his publisher like reached out to me, his, his publicist, I'm sorry, I'm growing thinking about this damn book. His publicist um, reached out to me after the interview, like, Sterling loved you, like, so much we just wanted to thank you again like it was such a great conversation your energy was so great like he just really had a great time he enjoyed meeting you it was really sent me a really nice like thank you email and that's not something that happens a lot especially during a press junket where um they were going to talk to a bunch of journalists that day you know what i mean like it wasn't like i was the only person that they were going to talk to so Sterling had been like my best, like I felt like kind of one of my be better celebrity like interactions just in general. And Chadwick actually was like my worst. And I like I left that interview and I had like told people like, yeah, like I felt like Chadwick was kind of an asshole. Like, you know, and here's why, here's what happened. Um, first of all, before he had even before I even met him, like before I even got into the room with him, a publicist, it wasn't his publicist, it was like a publicist for the movie. 
was like, yeah, you know, we're gonna get you in with Chasmic with in with Chadwick. And just so you know, um, he's not in the best, you know, mood this morning. Like, and I'm like, that's weird. Like, just that like other people already know that you are in a bad mood. You know what I mean? Like you at work, your your colleagues are already like <laughs> Just so you know, he's on a rampage. Just, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of felt like that was the vibe. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, it's whatever. I'm still, like, kind of prepared to go in and do my thing. I, I went in there, and he he was, like, just in a in a bad mood. Like, I just felt like he was, I felt like he was just, like, very annoyed with all of my questions, even though, like, I knew that they were, like, good questions and, like, not really just, like, with the shits, not really in, like, a, you know, a friendly mood. And I kind of, like... I have, I always have like this perspective where like, I met a lot of uh, celebrities more than once. So I always say like, I never will like judge like a celebrity based on like their first interaction. So I didn't take it super personally. Like I didn't feel like he was like, um, you know, being disrespectful or, you know, nothing like that. But it was just clear that he was in a bad mood. And I just assumed like, oh, like, you know, he probably filming, he's on, you know, really tight uh, schedule for, you know, he's an actor, like everything that he's doing. But like, shit, I'm tired too. It was a real early press junket. Um, we, I had to be there at like seven in the morning. So I'm like, yeah, like, I'm, I also have to go to work. I also have to be up here early. I'm also tired. There are, there are also places that I would rather be. Like, I also didn't get a lot of sleep. I've also been on deadline. You know, like, I I definitely, like, am not going to ever, like, subscribe to this idea that just because people are famous, just because people make more money than me, that, like, their time is somehow, like, more important than mine if we have to come together for a work event or for anything like that. But I just remember leaving that situation and feeling like, he was an asshole and knowing what I know now which is that he was dealing with a colon cancer diagnosis when he got diagnosed it was already in stage three that just hit different like it just felt I didn't feel like an asshole because I didn't treat him poorly but you know it was definitely a memory that stuck with me it was definitely an experience that I shared with other people like yeah like I had a dope time with Sterling but like Chadwick was kind of like not really feeling it and obviously like I don't know if what he what his energy that he was bringing to the to the table was related to his to his diagnosis or anything but I definitely feel shitty now <laughs> you know what I mean like having carried that energy when this person had the pressure of not only his work but also a very very serious um diagnosis like he he could have literally had a, a shitty conversation with his doctor today before or anything like I just don't know it's just scary to think about I guess that like you could be sitting on the other side of a table from someone who is holding on to so much and then to like really see the the outcome of that like you like the stakes were high this was life and death and like ultimately it ended in in his death it's just that kind of fucks me up a little bit as a lot of people do i've seen a lot of my friends who are um journalists like sharing their uh interview clips with him and all of that stuff uh like experiences that actually looked like so much more positive than the one that i had and i know that there was like i think the first thing i wanted to say was like i wish that there was more that i could do to like make sure that our like interaction was more positive but it's there was nothing that i could have done to like change what happened or how that happened but i don't know it just sucks it sucks it's a it's, it's a terrible way to feel knowing what he was dealing with up to the end. I guess I wish his family nothing but peace and comfort. I know that the next couple of weeks and months are not going to be easy for them. Like the world is going to go back to normal and it's not going to be normal for them. You know, um, I always think about that when people pass away, like multiple times this year i've been like damn i hope vanessa bryant is okay you know so yeah that was my chadwick Bellsman. that was my my one 
time meeting Chadwick and my experience with him and what he was like, and I wish it was different. Um, so I am blending in my, it's a terrible segue, I know, I'm blending in my contour, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blending in my concealer and then I'm also going to blend, blend in a little bit of contour that I put on the side of my face and then start to set that. The other thing, did you all watch I May Destroy You? If you have turned, if you have not watched, I may destroy you. First of all, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel first, but then stop watching the video and go watch the whole show. Kayla Cole, first of all, like that bitch. Some people just are too creative. Like some people are just so creative in a way that it makes me uncomfortable a little bit. And that's how I feel about her low key. Like how you get all the talent? Like she is so, so insanely, insanely talented. Like I just, I don't understand like her writing um, and her acting too. And it's so funny because I didn't like, I'm one of the many people who did not like chewing gum. Um, I feel like that's been like a common thing. Like it's crazy because I ain't like chewing gum. I didn't either sis, <laughs> who knew? Um, but I did not like chewing gum. I think it was just like too British or some shit. I don't know. But the way she has told this story, which I mean, this isn't really a spoiler, but like, I May Destroy You explores consent um, in a very modern context. Um, and what struck me was that like the feeling of like dread. So like there isn't a singular, uh, there isn't a singular experience with like, like there are several instances of sexual assault in the show. And it gets to a point where there's almost like this existential dread. Like you see people coming up against situations that may trigger them or situations that may be dangerous or maybe just like not as safe as they think. And it's like, oh God, no, no, no. Like, please no more, like not again, no more. Like they don't deserve this. Um, and I, but I love that. And it, because people need to understand that that really is how pervasive sexual assault is. Like, and I don't think that people understand that. Like people need to, that shit really is like, that shit really is like hiding in our relationships that we think are safe and our hookup culture and, you know, in our uh, friendships and our, oh, I forgot to contour in here. Um, like, they, they, it, it really is hiding in all of those places. So like, I feel like for some people who thought maybe the show was like getting to a point where it was starting to feel like a reach, I was like, I don't really feel like that because like, that really is how the shit go. Like, oh, it's so good. And it's just beautifully shot. Um, a lot of people do not like the ending, but I feel like a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people just want a, se a second season and that's okay. You can want a second season. Like you could want to know like more information about what happens to people, but like that's what second seasons are for. Like I think as a show creator, you come out the gate with a first season of a show. I'm very unsure if you're going to get a second season. So you really do have to say like the important things that you want to say in the first season, but then you make room for to say something else in the next season. So. Um, I think for folks who feel like maybe disappointed with how we ended, like that's what a lot, where a lot of those feelings are coming from. But like, I, I loved it. I liked how it ended. I thought it was very masterfully done. Okay, so I'm gonna apply um, a little bit of setting powder to set my um, contour and then do my eyes and probably finish. Um, and I'll probably check back in with you guys once I have a finished look. <sighs> okay, so. This is what we're giving, all right? Went with a little bit of purple vibes today. Um, I was actually thinking about doing my hair. <laughs> but baby, let me tell you something. You know, you know, you know those memes that be like, adulting is coming to, you know, terms with the fact that, you know, you, your family is has mental health issues or whatever the case may be. Maybe for me, adulting is coming to the acceptance that I don't have the time, the willpower, nor the skill that I used to have for doing my hair. Um, not even when it's already in box braids and I probably could just put it up in a bun. 
Um, I just don't have it in me, so <laughs> y'all gonna be getting more of these. <laughs> Cause this is, this is it for me. This is just it. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching this video. Make sure if you have not already subscribed to my channel that you go ahead and do that. Go ahead and handle that. Oh, also, I'm going to put some press on nails on, too. Don't, don't trip. I'm, I'm going to show y'all the picture before y'all get up out of here, so don't even worry about it, boo-boo. <laughs> um, make sure you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Um, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about my look. I told y'all it's not a beauty channel, but bitch, <laughs> tell me I'm cute. <laughs> um... So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. I'm going to be posting the pictures on Instagram. Make sure you follow me there at Bad Fat Black Girl. Thanks so much for watching.